Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. Okay, if you would, open your Bibles to Judges chapter 20. If you notice, I didn't write the verses down because we're going to be going through a lot of verses. and all. But I want to give you some background on what's happening here uh, before we go into it. In chapter 19, you have a Levi that had a concubine and uh, who became unfaithful and returns home to live with her father in Bethlehem. The Levi goes to her father's house and persuades his concubine to return home with him. So on their way home, they spend a night in Gibad, uh, a Benjamite city with an old man at his house. During their stay, wicked men surround the house of the old man and demand the Levi to come out so they could have sex with him. The old man refuses and offers his own virgin daughter and concubines, but they refuse him. The Levi sends out his concubine and they rape her throughout the night. They finally let her go and she crawls back to the house and dies. The Levi really torn up about this, takes his uh, dead concubine back to his home, cuts her into 12 pieces, equal pieces, and sends one piece to every tribe of Israel. There's 12 tribes of Israel, including the Benjamite tribe, which is where this took place. All the tribes unite and go after the men who did this. But the Benjamite, Benjamite, Benjamin, Benjamites <laughs> would not give up the men and were willing to go to war rather than give them up. And this is where our sermon starts this morning in Judges chapter 20. What we see in 20, what we'll see today is God, they, the, the 11 tribes get together and they're going to go and forcibly get these men. But the, the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin, is going to fight for these guys. Now this shows you several things here. Number one, how bad off and how to, out of the will of God that they're living. This almost sounds like Sodom and Gomorrah. The same situation where they came to want to take the angels out and have sex with them and everything. I mean, it's almost the same story is how perverted they got. And what happens was, they, for whatever reason, the Benjamites, I guess, were so perverted as a, as a tribe living there that they were willing to defend these guys. So now you have the 11 tribes coming down to go to war against uh, the one tribe. And what happens is they end up having three battles, which we're going to talk about this morning. And God tells the Israelites to go to war, and yet they get defeated the first two battles. Not until the third battle do they actually win. And we're going to talk about the, the, what the lessons are for us here today and take a look at it. So let's look at the first battle. Judges chapter 20, verse 18. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Now note here that Israel does not ask God if it's his will for them to go to war against them. They assume that the, this is a just cause. This was an awful thing that took place. All they did was they asked God which tribe should go first. And he answers. He says, send Judah. Now, when you think of the 11 tribes against the one tribe, the sheer numbers of the 11 tribes, well, you would think would take over the one. And I think the Israelites were pretty well thinking this. I got a just cause. We'll go against this. It's no big deal. Just a matter of which one God wanted us to go after. <coughs> so they never did anything other than they went ahead and went. Verse 21. But here's the surprise. The Benjamites killed 22,000 of the men of Judah. 22,000 men died. The battle is not going right. They are, they are doing this for the right cause. The 11 tribes. 
but they did not ask God the right way. And we're going to see how this lesson plays through here. Let's jump to the second battle. Judges chapter 20, verse 22. And the people, uh, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves, set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves array in the first place. So what they're doing is they're going back and they're going to set themselves up the same way they did in the previous battle. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord until evening and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord says, Go up against them. Israel was not living a good life either, the 11 tribes. They were not quite as perverted as the Benjamin tribe, but they weren't living for God either. And we're going to start seeing here that God is using this to bring repentance from Israel before he's going to do anything. So this time, the Israelites wept. Now the first time they just said, hey, which tribe should go up? This time now, they're weeping and crying and asking God and, and, and you know, what, what should we do? But you notice that God only says, yeah, go up, go ahead and go to battle. So the second battle here, Israel loses 18,000 men. So think about this, almost 30, well about 30,000 men have died now in two battles. Something's not right. Now the third battle, Judges chapter 20 verse 26. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept. And sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. For the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin? my brother, or shall I cease? And the Lord says, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thy hands. Now I don't know if you notice something here, that each battle, Israel gets closer to God. The first battle, they assumed they, this was the right thing to do. But whether it was God's will, they don't know. They didn't ask. All they ask is, Oh, we're going up, but which one of us should go up? The second time, they at least wept throughout the evening, cried. Now, the third time, they're praying the whole day, they're fasting the whole day, they're doing sacrifice before the Lord, they're doing all the right things. And guess what? God not only says, go up, but he says something important, I will give you victory. Now, if you ever go through the Old Testament, through David and all that, every time they went to war, God always says, I will give you victory. I, you will take the city. But in the first two battles here, he never says that. Well, we all that are saved serve a righteous God, and sometimes I think we forget this. That's what Israel did. They forgot their place. They started doing what they wanted to do and serve God the way they wanted to. See, they jumped up real quick. They thought that was a wrong thing, but they weren't living right. They were going to do a good thing, but they didn't have that right relationship with their God. God is holy, and as well, he's very righteous. And sometimes we have a tendency to forget that, and that's something we have to remember every day the rest of our lives. We have to serve him his way and not our way. The tendency is, if I have time or if I want to, I'll serve God my way. I will do it the way I feel like I want to do rather than do it the way God wants us to do. I always get a kick out of it. I always tell people about this when, when we talk about church and meetings and all. And I've always had people say, you know, yeah, yeah, you got Sunday morning, Sunday evening service and all that. And yeah, well, oh man, I want to do it the way the Bible does it. I said, you really do? I said, they met every day. <laughs> every day, every night, all through the week, every night. I said, you want to do it that? 
Now, in the old days, in the Bible days, they didn't have morning and evening service. It was all day. Now, the reason, I, I, I'm saying this from my own self. Number one, they didn't have cars. They couldn't go back home. Home was 20 miles away, 15 miles away. Well, how long does it take you to walk that distance? So they stayed there, had food, and ate in between, and did that. Well, as time went on, we can run back to the house, so that's where more or less morning and evening service became. Instead of meeting every day, now it was only on Wednesday. But, you know, God, and, and something that was said here today, Heather knows she needs to be here to grow, to learn. See, we have to be in church and Bible studies to grow and learn. If we don't, we're not being home. Reading the daily bread is great. Reading the Bible is good, but it's not enough. We have to have that relationship with God. And that's what took place here with Israel. They lost all that. They were serving God their way. They got perverted because they weren't growing in the Lord. Got away from the Lord. And they thought, oh, well, we're doing the right thing. God's going to bless. Uh, 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 uh. Not until you get your life right with me. Then I will bless. So we've got to be careful we don't make the same mistakes as, as Israel did. Israel had not been close to God, as I said earlier. God's teaching them that they cannot live two separate lives. One the way they want to, and to serve God the way they want to. I wish I could listen to the sermon. That wasn't a sermon. It was a speech of a lady talking to a bunch of ladies, a uh, lady conference or something. And I love what she said. Just, I thought it was really neat. She says, what we do as Christians is we serve God each day a different way. And she put it as in, today I will serve God ten, $10 worth of God today. You know, I'm going to give him $10 worth. In other words, what she was saying more or less is I'm going to serve him 10% of the day. And then the rest of the day is going to be for me. Tomorrow she might serve God 50% of the day. So what she was going to give to God, she just used it in a money sense rather than time. But I thought, what a wonderful illustration. We have to wake up and realize this is 100% all day, every day thing. It's not what we want, it's what God wants. And as we do that, what happens? God blesses, just as, as we've seen testimonies today. God blesses and takes care of us. And one thing, you know, we have a tendency to say, well, you know, this is hard. I can't, I can't make it here and do this all the time. And, and the thing is, it's actually easy. And Christ says, my yoke is easy, my burden's light. If we do what he says, he keeps coming in and blessing. And the end result is we're having a wonderful life while we're here on earth. If God is in that right relationship, 100% of the time, not 50, not 10%, not 25%. God was bringing Israel back into spiritual repentance. And he had them down on their knees, crying, fasting. And when that happened, what happened? By the way, I'm not going to go through the rest of the story here, but just if you're interested, Israel killed so many of the Benjamites that it almost wiped out the whole tribe. I think there was only, I forget what it was, 400 left out of whatever it was, start off with, 100, 200,000. I mean, that was a great slaughter. And the other 11 tribes, after they got victory, ended up saying, we got to save this tribe. This is part of the 12 tribes. And that's, you'll read that in the other ch next couple chapters, how they did that. But see, their heart was right now. They wanted to still save their brothers, bring things back in, get their fellowship right with the Lord, and that's what they ended up doing. It's not enough to believe in God. We must have a relationship with him. And a relationship is a 24-7 thing. It's all day. My relationship between me and my wife doesn't stop. It's there all the time. Whether she's at work or I'm at work and all. And that's the way it's supposed to be between us and our Savior. This time, Israel waited on God. And God delivered them 
as it says in verse 28, and Israel ends up winning the war. God used this event to bring his people back into fellowship. All of Israel was out of fellowship, not just one tribe. And this is a great lesson for us, an opportunity. God used this as an opportunity to bring them back into fellowship. And God is going to use things in our lives that are going bad. That could God could give us the victory on, but he won't. See, he'll let us lose the first battle, the second battle, until we get right. Then he's going to come in and take care of us. And that's what grace is about. See, eventually, it, when we get in the right spot, God comes back in. He never holds it against us once we get our lives right. That's the best part about it. He doesn't go back in history and says, here, you're doing it again. He doesn't bring back that back up. God's willing to forget and forgive. But only if we get ourselves right with the Lord. And that's the lessons that are here. Two lessons I see here today is make your life where it should be. Make the decisions you need to make. Seek God in everything before you do anything. No matter how trivial it might be. You know, it's easy to ask God when we need $100 today. That's a big thing, you know. But it's, what about when you only need a dollar, 50 cents, or you need, you lost something, you dropped it someplace. Take the time to just say, and you can't find it. And you pray, Lord, help me find this. Little trivial things. To trust God in everything in your whole life. Understand something here. God will only put up with us so long. And he will, even under grace, bring things into our, use what goes into our lives, these things that occur, and he's going to use them to bring us, try to bring us back. Now, we can, re, we can reject that. But the more we reject it, go back to the prodigal son. Look at his life after he kept rejecting, rejecting, and finally said, My father's servants eat better than I do. And he went home knowing at least he'd get a good meal even if his father didn't forgive him. He finally woke up. And the best part about it is what did his father do? Ran! Gave the ring! Oh, just rejoice. That's the illustration of what God will do for us. And that's what he did here for Israel after they got in the right situation, right fellowship, then the next thing you know, they got full victory. They were in the right relationship. God took over, took over and gave them the victory. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.